Welcome dear students. Today we are going to start with very basic and informative chapter of science and technology part 1. Let's see a small video clip from YouTube channel named Don't Memorize for introduction to our chapter and link to this video is also provided under video. So let's go through the video and we will discuss more about the chapter in the next slide. By now, we are aware of the difference between elements, compounds and mixtures. Do you remember the differences? Mixtures are like food items that we consume. They contain everything in proportion that we desire. We can add or remove a substance according to our need. Compounds on the other hand are those which have substances in fixed proportion. So if you change the proportion of substances, it will affect the compound and render it changed. For instance, if you remove even one hydrogen from H2O, that is water, the composition changes and water as a compound does not exist. Thus, fixed proportion is a must in compounds. Lastly, we have the elements. These are the purest forms of any known substance. They are composed of only the same type of atoms. There are neither proportions nor random mixing of substances. So can we say that compounds and mixtures are made up of elements? Absolutely. So in nature, it implies that elements are the basic forms of every material that we find around. And hence, in order to study every substance around us, we need to begin with studying the various elements. So where do we begin? Maybe the reactivity or maybe the physical properties first, right? I'm asking if we can study the reactivity and physical properties of each of the elements. Is that feasible? Well, all these would have been valid only if the elements would be few in numbers. Do you know the number of elements that exist? Astonishingly, the number of elements that we find naturally occurring is 98, while the total number of elements known to mankind is 118. So how do we study each element individually for all its properties? Looking at the number of elements that exist, I don't think it would be convenient to pick every element individually and study all the properties, right? Imagine you have to organize the kitchen. You will not place any vessel or eatable randomly anywhere. You will organize the shelves and refrigerator in the most convenient way which is suitable for your needs. Similarly, for studying so many elements, we need to organize them appropriately. An organization begins with arrangement. Yes, arranging the various elements is the first step towards understanding their properties. And arrangement is possible only if we categorize them, right? This is how we organize the elements. And this process of categorization helps us study the elements with ease. In other words, we've classified the elements here. Classification of elements is categorizing the various elements into groups based on similarities and differences in their properties. The classification system helps us in grouping the various elements into categories which we refer to as the periods. Hence the system is also referred to as the periodic classification of elements. Let's get to know how periodic classification was carried out in the early days of emerging chemistry when not many elements were known to people. Let's start with the periodic classification of elements. Let's understand the meaning of periodic word first. I'll give you the simple examples. The days of the week are called periodic. That is, if today is Monday, the eighth day from now is going to be Monday again. Your favorite TV shows come at the same time every day. It's periodic. Your school bell rings at the same time every day. That's repetitive or periodic. In similar way, the periodic table is also repetitive in its own way. These elements, even though they all are different, they have brothers and sisters who have similar chemical and physical properties. 
So this family of elements sit together in a particular order in a periodic table which we are going to learn in this chapter. Let us discuss learning objectives of today's topic. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe early attempts at classifying elements. You will be able to explain Doberider's triad with examples. You will be able to identify Doberider's triads from the following groups of elements having similar chemical properties. And you will be able to explain Newland's law of octaves with its limitations. As we all know that there are 118 elements known to us. All these elements have different properties. In order to make their study easier, classification of elements is done. Classification means identifying similar species and grouping them together. Many scientists and chemists try to attempt to classify the elements in a logical way. The first and most apparent one was to classify all elements into metals and non-metals. This attempt was first done by the French scientist Antoine Lavoisier in 1789. At his time, only 30 elements were known. He is also known as father of modern chemistry. Dobrainer's Triad it was around the beginning of 19th century that the famous German chemist attempted the classification of known elements. It was none other than Johann Doberainer. He classified the elements known at that time in particular manner. He placed them in a group having three elements each, which is known as triad. Here on the screen, you can see three elements have arranged together in a triad. Children, do you think these three elements are arranged randomly? Of course not. Doberainers arrange these three elements in the order of their increasing atomic masses in such a way that the average of atomic mass of first and third element in the set give the atomic mass of the middle element. And these elements have some similar chemical properties. Let us study some examples to understand Dobrainer's triads in a better way. On the screen, you can see the three sets of example as written. In the first set of example, calcium, tronchium, and barium are arranged in the increasing order of their atomic masses. When we take the average of the atomic masses of calcium and barium, we get 88.7, which is approximately equal to the atomic mass of strontium. Then in the second set, lithium, sodium, potassium are arranged in the increasing order of their atomic masses. When we take the average of atomic masses of lithium and potassium, we get 23 which is approximately equal to the atomic mass of sodium. Similar way, we can solve the third set of example. So these all sets are represents Doberainer's triads. Also, in previous slide, we have studied that three elements arranged in a triad are not arranged randomly. They have some chemical properties similar in the triad. For example, if we consider lithium, sodium and potassium, they all are metals. All react with water to form alkalis and all have valency 1. Similar way, if we will consider 
third set chlorine bromine and iodine these all are non metals all react with water to form acids and all have valency 1 same way we can explain the first set also these all are metals oxides of these metals are alkaline and all have valency 2 limitations of dobereiner's triad dobereiner could find only few triads from elements known at that time and he could not even put all the elements known at that time in his triads the rule of dobereiner triad could not be applied to the elements which had very low or high atomic mass such as if fluorine chlorine and bromine are put together in a triad in increasing order of their atomic masses the atomic mass of chlorine is not an arithmetic mean of atomic masses of fluorine and bromine newly discovered elements did not fit into the triad after the advancement of techniques of measuring atomic mass more correctly Dobereiner's law became obsolete. Newland's law of octave. Though Dobereiner could classify only few elements, his work encouraged other scientists to study elements in a better way. One such scientist was a British chemist called John Newland. He was chief chemist of a sugar refinery in London. Later, he has quit the job and actually started studying elements in different ways. After a lot of thinking, an idea struck him. He arranged known elements from hydrogen to thorium in increasing order of their atomic masses. interestingly he found a pattern newland compared his observations to the notes of an octaves in western and indian music the first note is the same as that of the eighth note of music this is exactly what newland's observed where every eighth element have properties similar to that of the first element with this analogy newland's name the grouping system of an element as law of octaves and even newland's law of octaves here on the screen in the table of arrangement you can see the elements hydrogen fluorine and chlorine resembles in their properties similarly in second column lithium sodium and potassium resembles one another in their properties limitations of newland's law of octaves This law of octave is valid up to calcium only as beyond calcium all the elements do not obey law of octaves This law is valid for lighter elements only that means elements with higher atomic masses could not be accommodated in this pattern Here in the table you can see several elements were fit into the same slot for example cobalt and nickel were placed in the same slot then elements with dissimilar properties were grouped together for example the halogens were grouped with some metals such as cobalt and nickel as we know they are not similar from any aspect then 
you can see here in the table iron is placed far away from cobalt and nickel though they are similar in properties and lastly the elements that were discovered later could not be fit into the octave pattern with all these limitations newland's law of octaves also had to be ruled out let's have a quick recap of what we have studied today classification is important to study elements and join levoisier classified elements into metals and non metals then we have studied dobereiner's triad where he has arranged three elements in a triad where atomic mass of the middle element is approximately equal to the average of atomic masses of other two elements then we have studied the limitation of dobereiner's triad where he could find only few triads out of known elements then newland's law of octaves where newland's arranged known elements from hydrogen to thorium in the increasing order of their atomic masses he compared this arrangement with the octaves in music and formulated a law which is called newland's law of octaves the law states that the properties of every eighth element resembles that of the first one then we have studied limitations of newland's law of octaves this law is applicable up to calcium only as beyond calcium all the elements do not obey law of octave then this law is valid for lighter elements only that means elements with higher atomic masses could not be accommodated in this pattern third limitation elements with dissimilar properties were grouped together for example the halogens were grouped with some metals such as cobalt and nickel as we know they are not similar from any aspect then iron is placed far away from cobalt and nickel though they are similar in properties and lastly there is no place for newly discovered elements in octave pattern so children i hope you have understood what we have studied today we will learn more about periodic classification of elements in detail in the next module So children this is the homework for today's topic you have to identify the dobereiner triad from the following groups of elements having similar chemical properties you have to solve these examples in your notebook we will study about periodic table in detail in the next module till then take care of yourself and enjoy online learning Thank you very much.